let's look at this architecture now okay what i have got over here is there is a multiplier and there is an adder and the inputs to the multiplier are essentially these two units coming in here right the two arrows coming in from the left hand side and what i can see is there is two blocks out here which if you look closely at them are essentially some kind of memory blocks right i can think of them as a read only memory if necessary well not exactly read only especially the one on top because i need to update its value with x of n okay but why am i calling it a memory because one way of looking at it is i am giving it an address right which is basically the counter value and what i get out over here is going to be a value which is essentially some either x of n right x of n minus k or h of k depending on which memory block is being used okay what i have drawn of course is i have basically shown it as you know one block which is connecting to a multiplexer and just one of the values depending on the counter is selected which is exactly what the read portion of a memory block also does okay so how does this entire architecture work effectively what it's saying in other words is this multiplier right i need to give it two inputs one of them is x of n minus k the other is h of k and i need to repeat this capital n times okay how do i repeat it capital n times that's where this counter comes in okay by having a counter which says okay i'll count from 0 up to capital n minus 1 i can change the inputs going into the multiplier capital n times okay and get each of the successive values applied as inputs to the multiplier now of course what that means is as and when i am changing the values i need to make sure that the previous set of values are added and stored into a register right so this is basically a register and in fact this combination unit both of these together is called an accumulator okay so what does the accumulator do it basically adds and stores the value if i do this capital n times it means that the nth time that i'm doing it the output of that register is essentially going to be the correct value that i want or rather the output of the adder is going to be the correct value that i want okay that is the y of n what should i do after that once again reset the register back to zero so that in the next capital n clock cycles i can once again accumulate the next output value the only thing that i need to change is that this x of n right which is coming in over here every time that i am flushing out the value from the register on the right hand side i need to put in a new value of x of n over here into the register and you know appropriately shift all the values down by one okay so that the oldest value gets thrown away and the newest value comes in on top okay so this in other words what i have managed to do by this architecture is to say that i have a single multiply accumulate unit a mac unit so to say there are memory blocks which hold the values of x and h and a counter which will sequence across all the operations right this entire thing together this unit is what i'll call the mac the multiply accumulate unit okay and the two memory blocks are responsible for feeding it appropriate values and the counter will take care of the sequence of operations if i compare this in terms of total hardware usage against my original direct form 1 implementation right total hardware what do i need over here one multiplier one adder one accumulator register one counter up to n which will be some log n bits in width and two memory blocks okay on the other hand the previous architecture that i had over here right this one in terms of hardware what do i need over here i need 
n multipliers and n minus 1 adders and n minus 1 registers right no memory blocks are required but on the other hand the number of multipliers adders and the individual registers is much higher okay so how do i compare between these two architectures it's not entirely obvious right it's not clear which one is better there are two things at hand over here one of them is if i sort of say that the memory blocks can somehow be implemented efficiently either i have some compact memory blocks or perhaps you know this is actually doing some implementation where the data is anyway getting stored in the memory of some kind of a cpu and then i'm trying to filter it right then the memory blocks effectively come for free which means that in terms of my hardware all that i'm left with is one multiplier one adder one register and a small counter right the counter need not be very large it's just like let's say for you know uh, if capital n is 20 then you will need a 5 bit counter or something like that right it's a very small piece of hardware which means potentially this is shared hardware i could end up using much less total hardware than is required for my original design which needed capital n of each of these units right so it looks as though this shared hardware architecture could potentially give me a much smaller design what's the catch the sample rate over here is significantly smaller than the clock rate right how much smaller and why am i saying that it's smaller because i mean if you look carefully i've noticed that you know the x of n is coming in uh, in here at the rate fs whereas the clock frequency applied to the counter is n times fs in other words the counter has to count n times for every sample that's being processed right and in fact what i can say is that fs should basically be equal to fc the clock rate divided by n it could be lower than this also right so it's not that fs has to be exactly equal to fc by n it cannot be higher than fc by n given the architecture that i've shown over here if it's lower then what it will mean is there will be some cycles on which you know no multiplication is being done or something like that okay the point of all of this was to show that it's relatively easy to construct an architecture where the sample rate can be actually smaller than the clock rate in other words the clock rate and sample rate need not exactly be the same another way of putting it is i can very easily construct architectures where i can run something at a high speed right so the clock rate used for the system can be high but that by itself does not mean that the sample rate that i'm processing actually needs to be high okay of course for those of you who have done dsp programming on a signal processor this is obvious because after all there what you are doing is you are writing a program which takes multiple clock cycles in order to to you know generate one output of the filtering for example right and that's exactly what i'm sort of demonstrating over here in fact if you think a little bit about the shared architecture that i've shown it is pretty much exactly how a signal processor would be designed right i would come up with an alu which would basically be this portion over here the arithmetic and logic unit that is capable of doing multiplications and so on i would have two memory blocks right from where i can read data and this counter can be thought of as the program counter plus a loop in software right and i can get exactly the same implementation that i have uh, shown over here 